Hello, and welcome back to Nightly Nerds. I'm Tote. And I'm Ginger. And we're playing... Dark Souls Remastered. And I just woke up about an hour ago. Yeah, you did. You can hear it. I think my voice is a little deeper. So, uh, for the for those that you're watching from the, the Shweeby Discord, you know, they, they were they were there while I was complaining about grinding. Oh. <laughs> um, I thought I muted you. <laughs> Meow. Is that your phone? That's my phone, yeah. So I did a lot of grinding. As you can see, we're level 97. <laughs> Oh yeah, we were like forty something. Fifty six. Okay. Um, that's because I want I want you know I kind of. <laughs> I could have said any number, you know, I still have been wrong. The max level <laughs> I'm going to put myself at is one twenty because that's the that's a meta level. A meta level is just you know a, a, a level to do PvP with, not to mention to uh, kind of stop yourself from being too overpowered in a. In I missed a, the group. I buzzed too. In a PVE sense, oh you know what? It's the alarm, not okay. Just put it all in silent mode. Um, yeah, it's it's to make it to where like, even if you're doing like multiple playthroughs, you're not being stupid overpowered. Uh huh. Because uh, you could you could max all of these stats out to ninety nine. You could, but what would be the point? The, the game wouldn't be fun at that point. Oh yeah, I get you. Like I have played so many games where I ground myself to a point where I was too powerful, and then like all of a sudden the game wasn't fun anymore. Yeah. Like you're like, oh, I need to get this strong so I don't have this problem anymore. And then you get too strong. And you're like, oh, this yeah. game's not fun anymore. So I did I did a bunch of grinding literally out here. Unless it's Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> then I also found out why we never saw that like witch that I was looking for. In oh, the you swamp. hadn't maxed out yet? So what it was is you need to get the Pyromancy Flame to plus 10 and then she'll show up. Because what uh. it is, I, pro I progressed the other Pyromancer a little too much. But that the little weird spider dude that we were able to talk to to get that little covenant, uh, uh -huh. he will also level up your pyromancy flame. Um, uh. Once I got it to ten, then she showed up. Then you could take it to fifteen with her. And then you gotta fight her. Oh no! Then 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 after that, she will like caught she'll she'll uh, charge you an enormous amount of souls to to increase the fire in the flame, which is why the flame looks bigger in the hand. Uh -huh. And then it goes up to plus ten. And as a quick little thing, my spell modifier is two two thirty, when it was like less than that sorcerer's catalyst of one thirty. Uh, dick in the hands better than two in a bush. Uh, so actually, I'll show it off. Um, I yeah, I also you bought a couple spells. I'm a little mad that I missed out on some spells. Wah! But I'm literally just burning him, and he's dead. Look at that. That's so. That broken. that was lesser combustion. This is greater combustion. Wah! Two. Oh, it still takes two, but it's a bigger flame. I it's a that. much bigger flame. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm trying to join this little covenant because there's... I found out the reason why we couldn't beat that one little, like, manticore chimera thing uh -huh. is because uh, you're not meant to fight him with heavy weapons. You're supposed to be right up on top of him because if you don't... He does ranged attacks. Ah, and he uh, shoots lightning at you forever, and then he dive bombs you. If you get too far on his back, he stings you with a scorpion tail. Um, and so I'm going to try to get us a a faster weapon. Uh-huh. So yeah, there's a little cat up there. Oh, kind of like, like a Cheshire thing going? Yes. And I mentioned about the Legend of Artorias. You might not remember it, but, you know, he's he's uh, one of Gwyn's knights that defeated the abyss, the little, like, the literal darkness of this world. Uh-huh. Is he notorious? All right, so we want to join. She's Alvina of the Darkwood. Darkwood, which we haven't explored too much. I don't even remember. Did we go through it at all? No. Um, well, then we haven't explored it at all. Like we we went we went literally into here to fight these guys to and get then some left. souls, and then we left. And so we get the Cat Covenant ring, which. Is a neat little covenant, so if you're wearing that ring and you're in the dark forest, you can invade other people's worlds that aren't part of the covenant. It's like, you're not supposed to be here. Ah. You're a defender of the cat forest or dark wood or... Okay. So, what that does for us is one of two things, and I hope it's the first thing. So, there is a, there's a certain ghost NPC that... Uh -huh. um, Granted, if we attack these NPCs now, which they'll no longer attack us, we'll uh, we'll break the covenant, and uh, you know they'll start attacking us again. <laughs> uh, and then, what you have to go make restitution to uh, to not you know make them all pissed off at us. Um, 
so there's there's an NPC called uh, Shiva of the East, and hopefully he's sitting up right next to where she was. The kitty. Right next to the kitty, because uh, sadly we're gonna kill him. Ah. Oh. He has a weapon. That we need. That we need. The alternative is uh, there's some, you know, the giant skeletons. Also, they don't attack you anymore because you're part of the covenant. Because you're part of the covenant. See, I need ah. that weapon that he's holding on to. It is a curved great sword, so about. Faster than this, hits just as hard and scales on dexterity. The problem is once I attack him, there's this guy. Ah. Little ninja. So. Ah. So. Uh, do you sell stuff? I can't remember. Oh, okay. You know, I have very, I have a lot of little things that, like, for whatever reason, they just interest me, and I like to watch or read things about them. All right, so let's be a little stupid here. What? And one of them is tanks. Oh, jeez. Poor guy, he's got assassinated. Yep. Oh. oh, oh, roll away, roll away. Nope, I need to pick that up. Roll away. Did you get it? I think I did. You died though. I died. Still, it's still there. I hope I'm hoping it is. Because <laughs> if it's not, it's gonna be a. Uh... Really dumb. Oh. What, if what if you'd rolled away and then you could have come back and grabbed it? I doubt it, uh, because both the okay, it's both, it's still there. Will they attack you now? Yes, yeah. they will. You broke the covenant, dude. <laughs> Whoa! All right, so let's get that ready. There it is. Homeward bone. Roll, roll, now oh, run. <laughs> I love this. It's, it's so silly, but yeah, it's fun. Let's get your souls back. Yeah, and my humanity, because I did get some humanity. I learned out that... Uh, you learned out? I learned. So most effects in this game that involve humanity caps at 10 humanity. Ah. So humanity affects drop rates. It affects the damage on some weapons. Um, but it caps at 10. You can collect... Up to 99, but you only really need 10. All right. All right, so from here, we're going to go visit Andre, in which I can actually find Andre the Giant? I watched that documentary. It was really good. I recommend it on HBO. Go watch it, everybody. Oh, yeah. So uh, well, we might talk about it in the next episode, but uh, Tote was going on, on and on about bread. Cause oh, it was a, earlier. He's on a diet that where he can't have bread. Well, that wasn't the reason I learned that. No, that's the whole reason why you're learning That's why I'm it. talking about it more. Yep, 100%. No, uh, can confirm. Bread is a fantastic thing. It helped humanity become what it is today. Um, so it's not an anti-bread thing. It's just I can't have it right now because because I'm fat. That's why I can't have it. It's not because <laughs> of bread. It's my own fault. But no, I was gonna also talk about was like I love I love tanks. Oh yeah, like armored vehicles that roll forward in in, in battle. And the th crazy thing about tanks was their heyday was. The end of World War One and the beginning of World War Two, and actually since then they haven't been what ever, when people think like, oh, tanks are so cool, they, they are, but because of the way tactics change and the way war is, uh, tanks without infantry support will get destroyed. Yeah. By infantry alone can destroy them, and tanks without or and then any anyone that has a strong um, uh, air superiority or air force. Tanks are not a problem. Yeah. They will just destroy them all day long. So, like, but tanks are still cool. And there's just, there's people who are into them. And, but I was watching this, uh, I was watching this thing about tanks recently. And during World War One, the, uh, before World War One, there was this Austrian guy who, like, he wanted to develop something to help protect the infantry because he saw, he was, he worked at this facility where they tested weapons and he saw what the future was going to be, what mechanized war would be in, before World War One happened, you know? Yeah. Like everyone thought World War One was going to be a quick, short thing and then, ended up, then they thought it was going to be a hundred years war because it was so brutal and horrible and the, the yeah. got stuck in the trenches and the stalemate and everything. And, but he wanted to develop a tank, but nobody would listen to him. And then people in France and people in Germany and people in England were all trying to do it, probably someone in America. And... Um, they all have these different ideas of these armored vehicles, and then they started building these things because they like we can't get across the trench field. So the first tanks they were developing were just to try to push through the barbed wire and stuff to get yeah. across the field, and like they didn't have armor on the sides that was adequate. And they were they were death traps for anyone inside, but they would lie like this. England's wouldn't really push for the make tanks, and they had 
the, like 5,000 tanks, but I think the the biggest battle happened, and the the Germans at the time only had like 20. Yeah. Other than the ones they captured from the British, and the French had a handful, and so they the the Allies had all the all the armor at the time, but they weren't that great. But they would lie to everybody at home, so they'd have a battle and it would be unsuccessful. And the tanks didn't work, but they would tell them that it was a victory because they wanted more tanks. Yeah. So people would give them would buy war bonds and don't give money to the to the war effort and they actually had like a play in england at the time where the main character was a tank <laughs> right and it was like successful where everywhere it went and then and then they had a competition they would they take they take tanks home and just have them like parade around the cities in england and they had a competition for because the tanks were people loved them they had they became toys and they became very popular because yeah. they are a cool thing. Like if you like oh, no, they mechanical a tank is just so, it's cool. You know it's a war machine. It's made for death, but at the same time it's also made to protect the people inside. You know, there's a lot of reasons for it. But um, so they'd have these competitions. They'd put a couple tanks up in the city, and you could go there to see the tank and pay money to see it and to get take pictures on it and stuff. And, uh, and there's a lot of reasons why their battles were not successful at first. Part of it was they, they didn't know how to use them yet. It was right. a brand new war machine. Uh, so even and even if the people who were driving tanks knew and their commanders knew, the generals who had never used a tank before didn't know how to use them. Take they a trip into the catacombs. <laughs> they wouldn't give them adequate adequate support, you know. And they and the other thing was they didn't have radios yet. Yeah. So we were using flags and pigeons to communicate during <laughs> war. <laughs> yeah, that's so they'd have right. to let pigeons out a back panel on the tank, and there'd be smoke and chaos, and then so. Even if the tanks won, there was a couple of battles where they actually did their objective. Then they were supposed to have cavalry and infantry nope. come in behind them, and they never came. Nope. nope. And so then they run, get run, circled run. around behind and get wiped out. Nope. So there was a whole bunch of reasons. It wasn't necessarily the tank itself that wasn't successful. But so they had these competitions, and people were in love with the tank because every battle was a victory, whether it was or not, for propaganda. And um, this is just one of these things my brother and I were talking about the other day. I'm going. I'm really going on a tangent here, but oh, you're good. I'm, I'm killing um, time. That so like the, the militarization of police, like guy. people. That's one of the things people complain about. But it's been happening since since there was a military and police. It's just what happens. You know, you develop something on the battlefield, and the cops are like, oh, we could use that. And so they had these. Anyway, so they had these competitions, and they had this tank sitting there, and people would come pay. And then they had a competition with the city who could give the most war bonds or something would buy, buy the most war bonds for tanks, would, like, won the competition. And Glasgow, Glasgow, Scotland won. Hmm. Right? So they were the, like, uh, the number one giver, the lover of the tank. Like, the tank became, like, their mascot, and they got all these, like, parades and stuff. So then the war ends, and things are going back to the way they were before, and then people are realizing that, hey, our jobs suck, and <laughs> we're not making any money, and we're being taken advantage of by because it's like there's no longer a war effort going on, so we shouldn't be working for like half wages to help support anything anymore. So give us back our full wages and things. So they start going on strike. So they send tanks to Glasgow <laughs> to oh, stop goodness. the strikers. And I was like, so the tanks they paid for were then used to stop them. And of course, they didn't really have to. They didn't actually use the tanks on the people. They just sent them all to like the like the the main market area and just parked them out front. Like, go ahead, strike. We dare you. And everyone's like, oh, I guess we won't strike. I just thought it was so that's, ironic. That's so... It's so horrible, isn't it? It's terrible. Uh, the English. You know, we're going through that kind of same thing now because there's all this, like, stuff being made and there's all this surplus from wars past or, or vehicles or new things that are made that are replacing old things. And a lot of it, they sell to police. And that's why the, drug, the war on drugs is bad because if you can keep the keep arresting people with that you get like more grants and more money and you can use that to buy tanks literally that's what the apcs that the the swat teams use and so you'll have this little department in the middle of nowhere that has like three patrol vehicles but they'll have a full swat team with a tank you dick for no reason yeah you know and i don't know it's a really interesting thing and I really went on a tangent there. I no, think we're did. out of time now. No, you, you, you're still at a good amount of time, but yeah, we could definitely end it there. All right, everybody. That'll end this episode of Tanks on Nightly Nerds. <laughs> As always, I'm Tote. And I got to kill these skeletons real quick. So I'll see you then. All right, everybody. Bye. Bye. Hey, did you like that video? Well, if you did... 
click the box on the right for another. Click the box on the left for a playlist. Of course, you could always just subscribe by clicking the link in the middle. Come find us on social media. There are links in the description below. Don't be afraid to leave us a comment. Thanks for watching. I'm Tote. I'm Ginger. See you then. Bye.